Good morning, guys. Happy Thursday. Got an exciting episode here for you. We are talking about all the optimal must starts at every single position. I'm going to pull up a visual. You're going to check it out right here. You're going to check it out. We're going to give you all the optimal players. You're going to see it here at each position. I really help you guys out with your starts and sits. It's a fun interactive episode. It's going to give you a ton of information. So if you're torn between who you should start, should it be Joe Burrow, who's got a great matchup versus Washington, or a guy that's maybe got a tougher matchup that's a big name. For example, let's say a Justin Herbert or an Anthony Richardson that you drafted high draft capital pick in. If you're torn between between who to start, you're going to know who's got the easier matchup versus position. We're going to go through all of them. Dude, I'm super excited. Football is back. We are in week three. We are full force now. The first two weeks were like, I would say, feeler out weeks. I mean, like just kind of getting a sense of kind of who's who. There's a lot of guys, some big names that kind of crap the bed. But now players are settled in. Those, you know, the, the K, I call it cage rust because I did MMA, right? And I watch MMA where they're kind of rusty. They've been out of the cage and they haven't fought for a while. In this case, it's kind of called field rust. I don't know if, you know if that's a term, but these players are now back on the field, and now this is the week. This is the, this is the week that separates the men from the boys. So if you're looking for starts and sets, this is the channel. If you're new to the channel, smash it, tap it, slap it, hit the thumbs up, guys. really helps the channel. And drop your question below. I'll try to get to as many questions as I can. Now, if you want direct access to me, meaning you want guaranteed answer to your question, guys, Join the front lines, patreon.com forward slash FF counselor. Join the generals group. I'm going to be dropping a Q&A in the community today. I'm going to answer your questions throughout the day exclusively, guys, in the Patreon group, of course, with exclusive videos, optimal DFS plays, all that stuff, everything laid out in a waiver wire, all laid out in the Patreon group. Join right now. All right, let's get into it, guys. Uh, again, I want to talk a little bit about some news here. Um, there, again, there's so much going on that, you know, with injuries, we kind of talked about it in our last show. If we went team by team, you might want to go check that out here. Uh, the only thing I'm really hearing here is that guys like Cooper cup, he's going to be out for a while. We heard it. Puka, some big names, right? Kenneth Walker did not participate Wednesday. Uh, Raheem Mosher with his chest was limited on Wednesday, which was yesterday. Uh, Dalton Schultz was limited. Nico calls is dealing with a foot hip injury. Uh, that's not good. A lot of people have drafted him in the second round. I'm not high on him. Already dealing with injury. Could be playing still. At the time of this recording, still uncertain. Uh, Jordan Love, he is practicing. There's a chance he could play on Sunday. That's great news. If you guys are Jaden Reed, Romeo Dobbs owners, I'm a Dobbs owner. That is exciting stuff. So I'm excited for Jordan Love. Good, good stuff. But again, as we go through these optimal plays at each position, we're going to talk a little bit, a bit, bit more about them. You guys are going to be aware because there's injury designations on some of these guys. I'm excited to dive in. So, Guys, let's start off with the quarterback position. Again, if you're in the car, uh, you can go check this out on YouTube at Fantasy Football Council. Go subscribe, turn on the bell there. And you can get a visual of this. And if you're in the car, I'm still going to explain this to you so you can listen to it uh, in an audio type format, okay? So let's go through this here. Guys that have optimal matchups. Now, Jordan Burrow versus Washington coming off an 18 point week. Everything is kind of laid out here so you guys get an idea. Uh, he's got to have a good week. Easy matchup. Kirk Cousins coming off a pretty solid week where they came back, crushed it. Drake London, game-winning drive. Awesome to watch being a Drake London owner. Uh, exciting stuff. Kirk Cousins uh, got a good matchup versus KC. Jared Goff versus Arizona. Great matchup here. Not been kind of safe. Like, he hasn't put up a 20-pointer. 14 points, give or take, last week, depending on the format that you're on. Uh, we want Jared Goff to start doing better. Good matchup versus position. Brock Purdy versus the Rams this week. Bo Nix, I mean, I would not start him. Again, these are just all the players laid out for you. Again, if you're in a super flex league, at least you could kind of take a look and see, should I, should I not start Bo Nix? Probably not worth the start. Coming off a 10-point week last week, we need more production. But again, a lot of these quarterbacks have been performing well. Guys like, you know, Pat Mahomes, right? Josh Allen had bad weeks, but we know they can recover. Now, some people are asking me like, well, Joe, Pat Mahomes is doing bad. He had a bad week. Uh, Josh Allen had a bad week. Why are you ripping on Anthony Richardson? Because Anthony Richardson is not proven, right? We kind of know the baseline and the ceiling of a Pat Mahomes, a Jalen Hurts if they have a down week, or even a Josh Allen. We kind of know what to expect of these guys. But when you have a quarterback, these some of these rookies, for example, Caleb Williams or Anthony Richardson, like even Bo Nix, like we don't know what these guys could do, what they're capable of. And, you know, seeing them perform 
really low to begin or having a bad week, you wonder if they're ever going to bounce back to a good form or are they even good at all? So that's kind of my, my argument there. But uh, let's get back to this here real quick. Uh, again, uh, Minshew got a good matchup versus Carolina. Again, I, I'm starting Zamir. We'll get to running backs in a second here. Uh, that's a great matchup for Minshew coming off a 14-point week. Anybody versus Carolina. Now, Andy Dalton is going to be starting for uh, for Carolina. It's going to be interesting offensive, the, offensively how they're going to do, how that's going to reflect for to guys like, you know, the receiving core for Carolina, Deontay Johnson and stuff like that. I think it gives them a little bit of a boost. Uh, but again, I think Gardner Mitchell's got a great match, especially if it's a DFS play you want to consider. Pat Mahomes versus Atlanta. Matt Stafford has a good matchup, but no wide receivers. We're going to get to wide receivers in a second, what to do there. Love the Josh Allen versus um, Jacksonville connection here. I think there could be a good matchup there. Coming off a 10-point week, we need that to come up. Lamar Jackson versus Dallas and Derek Carr, who's been pretty hot. Has got a good matchup versus Philly. Honorable mentions here, Kyler Murray, Sam Donald, all relatively good matchups. Now, when you see a 32 here, there's 32 teams in the NFL, right? And it's green, it means it's the easiest matchup. So in, con in contrast to that, if I see a one here, it's the hardest matchup versus position. Again, this is on paper. Again, you guys use your own discretion. This is just a guideline, a guideline, a sense, an idea, right? So you guys get a con some context as to who to start, who to sit based on matchups okay herbert had a good matchup last week only 13 points tougher matchup versus pittsburgh what he could be a menace so tougher matchup and he is as you can see the heart here there was an injury designation but he should be good to go be aware uh cj Stroud, and this is this these are stats based on the past couple weeks okay these defenses could come go up or down okay uh cj Stroud, tough matchup geno smith anthony richardson tough matchup versus chicago chicago's defense has been pretty solid coming off a 13 point week uh, I get, I, if you have a better option than Richardson, you probably, probably don't. I told you to avoid him. Uh, he's got that rushy upside, but if you don't have a better option, you got to start Richardson, but it is a tough matchup. You need to be aware. Jaden Daniels coming off a 13-point week, fifth hardest matchup. See, fifth hardest red, fifth hardest matchup for his position. Skylar Thompson. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people are, you know, upset that, you know, two has gone. Understandably so, because he drafted Tyreek Waddle and those receivers, and sure enough, Skyler goes into a relatively tough matchup versus Seattle. Seventh hardest matchup versus position. Uh, J Jacoby Brissett versus the Jets. Tough matchup. Jordan Love, again, I'd monitor the situation. There's a chance he could play against the Titans uh, come um, come this weekend. I think it's a 1 o'clock game. Make sure you monitor that. And Jalen Hurts, I mean, you got to start your Hurts guy, right? Uh, but again, 10th hardest matchup versus position. Trevor Lawrence, 11th hardest. And Daniel Jones, Relatively tough matchup. We can kind of see here Levis and Aaron, Aaron Jones kind of mid-range matchups along with Dalton and Prescott, okay? You guys can see it. It's all laid out for you guys. So you have aware who's kind of hot, who's kind of not this weekend for NFL Fantasy Week 3. Again, Burrow, Cousins, Goff, Purdy, I'd say Minshew, Mahomes, all good matchups versus position going into the week. So again, go back, watch us again, kind of see who's got the good matchups, who's got the tough matchups going into the week, okay? Let's move on to the uh, famous running back position, which I really, really love, uh, really, really love. So again, good to see here, Derek, uh, Derek, yeah, Derek Henry, good matchup, coming off a 17-point week, awesome versus Dallas. Uh, you know, who else is there? Alexander, and you're going to see some of these backup running backs in behind them. If you have them, maybe they could be could be good flex plays. Uh, again, I don't like how, the, the, you know, my program here, uh, the one I'm using has got Madison ahead of Zamir Zamir, head coach said that Zamir White is actually going to get over 20 plus touches. They're going to use them. He said the problem was it was Zamir. The problem was with the offensive line. He says the guys up front got to start working. So this is really good news for Zamir White. Super excited about him. I'm going to go ahead and start him based on matchup. Now, if Zamir White does bad this week, I'm going to look at benching him moving forward, but this is the week. Uh, Jordan Mason, great matchup here versus position here versus the Rams. Uh, good stuff. Uh, Kenneth Walker, again, watch the injury designation, but he does have a good matchup for Miami if he plays. If not, Zach Chabrode is a must-start in a good matchup this week, okay? Uh, Tony Pollard, Tajay. Tajay was dealing with some sort of ankle injury. He said he's going to be playing. Tony Pollard has kind of been the man, but not outstanding. 15 points last week compared to the five from Tajay. I still think Tajay is the better out of the running backs. He's still got to get going. Uh, as of right now, he's on my bench. I have some better options. Javante, 12 points last week, three the week before. Hasn't been good, but has a good matchup versus Tampa Bay. ETN, good matchup. Bigsby was a little banged up. ETN should be a start here. Um, you know, again, Buffalo, you know, sixth hardest matchup for his position. Other guys here, Jerome Ford, good matchup. 
versus position versus the Giants. Seven points last week, not the greatest. Uh, you know, Carolina versus Vegas, decent matchup here. Chuba, I'm not really a uh, you know a fan of him, but if you guys have don't have any other option, go for it. Josh Jacobs, I see a heart designation. He was a little banged up, but I think he should be good. I think Emmanuel Wilson is going to start getting some work now. If you got him off waiver wires, congratulations. He could be viable because we saw Marshawn Lloyd go on IR. Could be out for a while here. Uh, again, Rashad White hasn't been good, but relatively easy matchup versus position. Rashad White, uh, I, I have no stock in that guy at all, okay? And Ramondre Stevenson, definitely worth a start. Alvin Kamara, kind of a mid-range matchup. You can't sit Alvin Kamara, of course, okay? James Cook also, as you can saw, saw there, was an easy matchup or mid-range matchup. Saquon Barkley's got in tough versus the Saints. I'm not sitting him. Again, this is one of those examples where tough matchup, but... I'm just not going to sit him. I'm definitely going to start him, okay? James Conner, you got to start him. Hopefully, Trey Benson gets going here. I'm a big Trey Benson guy, not a Conner guy. When's he going to go down? Who knows? But second hardest matchup versus position for James Conner this week. J.K. Dobbins, who's been red hot, red, red hot. Tough matchup versus position versus Pittsburgh. Something to be aware of. See how he fares up against him this week. Third hardest matchup versus position. Aaron Jones, who's been sucking, fumbled last week. We're going to expect Ty Chandler to get some more work. But fourth hardest matchup versus position. By Jan, fifth hardest matchup versus position. Coming off a good week last week. Um, again, fifth hardest matchup versus KC. Going to be an entertaining game, no doubt. Zeke Elliott, I'm going to go ahead and sit him. I don't trust him. He's always good for, to plug in one touchdown. Uh, but again, seventh hardest matchup versus position. Zeke Elliott, don't don't really trust him at all. I remember everybody was kind of pushing Rico Dowell, Dowdle, whatever, before the season. Like years to wow us, we're not wowed. Four points and 10 points. 14 points. Uh, give or take, depending on the platform that you're on over the past two weeks. Rico Dowdle going back to his old self. Now, Carson Steele. If everyone's wondering about Carson Steele. Should you start him now? I heard that Kareem Hunt might get some action in this game. If he does, he may dip into the volume now. Again, people are like excited about this. I'm just like, man, he's not that good of a player. Like we don't, we haven't seen anything out of him that's going to, you know, in indicate to us that he's going to crush it this week. That being said, I see him plugging in a touchdown or something like that if they get into the goal line, and then people will be like, ah, I'm happy I got Carson Steele. Again, I, I'm not over the moon excited. I see some upside, but not. I don't think there's anything special there. I could be wrong. I, I really doubt it, though. Uh, Joe Mixon, ninth hardest versus position here, and Brees Hall, Braylon Allen. Again, if you want to start both of those guys, Braylon Allen had a good week last week. Is it going to continue? That's something to be seen and monitored. As of right now, it, it is still the brief show. Braylon coming off a big game, 20 points last week. Is that going to continue? Something to monitor and see. Uh, Jonathan Taylor and Jameer Gibbs, 11th and 12th hardest matchup versus position. So not the easiest matchups. Taylor versus Chicago, Gibbs versus Arizona. Something to consider, okay? Let's move on to the wide receivers here. And you can see here, again, you guys just use the visual here. Who's got the good matchups? Bengals receivers, easiest matchup versus position versus Washington. Andre Isovas had had a touchdown or two last week, so that is kind of why he's, you know, up there. Is his his value forty three hundred on? I think this is DraftKings either way on DFS. A little more expensive because T Higgins being sidelined, he got the work. Either way, they got good matchups. Uh, who else we got here? Chris Olave, good matchups versus position versus Philly. Olave, Rashid Shahid. Everyone's talking about Rashid Shahid having two good weeks. Is that going to continue? It very well could. An easy matchup. Second easiest versus position versus Philly. Something to consider there. Tyler Johnson, Demarcus Robinson. They've got an easy matchup versus San Fran secondary on paper. That being said, we don't know who the one is. I don't know. Do you know? Are these guys going to you know, perform on a high level? Are they going to be good? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. So it is kind of a dice roll dart throw if you are considering starting any of these wide receivers from the Rams. And uh, I think Parkinson could be good, you know, at tight end, but we'll get to tight end in a second here. Greg Dortch, Marvin Harrison, great matchup versus position versus uh, Detroit secondary there. Um, you know, Marvin Harrison, big week last week. Is that going to continue? I don't think he has a 32-point game, but I think he's going to have a good game and he's got a good matchup. Must start there. DJ Moore. I mean, finally a good matchup here for Chicago. Is Caleb Williams going to have a good game? This is the week. If he's got to do it against Indy, uh, fourth easiest matchup for his position for DJ Moore. Keenan Allen obviously banged up. What's what, not a surprise for Keenan Allen yet? Everyone's telling you draft Keenan Allen fourth round. I'm like, don't do it. And uh, there you have it. Now you're suffering. Romo Tuesday banged up a little bit as well. 
Brandon Cook's easy matchup, CeeDee Lamb ma easy matchup here. Who else we got here? We've got uh, Sam Fran receivers. Now, a lot of people thinking about starting Rashad Jennings. That's viable if Debo Samuel sits for sure. And, you know, these guys, like one point last week for Conley, Jacob Cowing, zero points. I think it's going to be Ayuk and Jennings, if anything, but they spread the ball around. Kelsey's looking for a bounce back week. Is it going to be this week? Who knows? Uh, Jalen Polk, there is something going on there. Maybe a breakout potential game versus the Jets. Prime time tonight. Something to monitor. Maybe not, right? Uh, nine points last week. Could be a flex play, but if you have a better option, go with that. If not, Polk could have some upside. Could get a touchdown this week. Now, this is the week for Keon Coleman. Some people are asking me, is Keon Coleman going to do well? This is the week, man. None of these wide receivers are do well. Cleo Shakir had 10, 11 points. Keon Coleman had zero. I mean, he had one target, zero catches. This is the wide receiver one of this team. I still believe in him. I'm going to bench him this week. Watch, this week he's going to put up 40 points. It's a breakout week. Uh, I just have better options. Until he gets going, he's on my bench, but I love him. I love him. There's a chance I may start him in one or two leagues, but I got to see how that goes, okay? Uh, Jordan Addison banged up. Be aware of there. Uh, this entire wide receiver core is banged up with the Miami uh, Minnesota Vikings, but relatively easy matchup. And Justin Jefferson set to play. It was a quadratic thing. He could be good to go. Amonra banged up. Again, they're spreading the ball around a lot, but easy matchup here for the Lions versus Arizona. And Calvin Ridley coming off his breakout week for this year. Calvin Ridley, a must start this year, okay? Uh, this week, okay? Calvin Ridley. Uh, some tougher matchups. Chris Godwin, Mike Evans. Obviously, again, you, you can't sit these guys, but what you notice here is that Godwin had the big week. And Evans had the crap week last week. And the week before, as you can see here, guys, all laid out here for you, Evans had the good week, 23 points, and Godwin also had a good week. So it seems like Godwin's been better out of these, you know, first two weeks, again, working out of the slot. But Evans has got to keep that up, you know, to return his draft capital. George Pickens, someone's got to catch the ball over there. I heard Fields is starting again for this team, but tough matchup versus position for George Pickens. Uh, who else we got here? Um, again, just be aware with those guys, with the Steelers receivers. Uh, you got Miami, tough matchup, and Skylar Thompson starting. So Tyreek, it's a big test for Tyreek Hill owners who he's coming off a six-point game, 6.6. .6, they rounded up here uh, in PPR. Seven-point game last week. This is the week, man. Like, he's got to do something. And he's got Skylar Thompson throwing the ball. Now, predicate on volume, which I think is going to go his way. He gets a breakout run. Breakout catch and run. You've got a viable start this week. But Tyreek Hill in some trouble this week if you guys are an owner with him for fantasy, okay? Uh, again, you got these wide receivers here. I still believe Dobbs is the one when Love comes back. And we talked about Love possibly playing this week, but they do have the fourth hardest matchup for his position against the secondary based on the past two weeks uh, playing Tennessee. Brian Thomas Jr., I'm still starting him against Buffalo. He is the one on this team. 15 points, 11 points compared to four and one. Everyone was telling you to draft Christian Kirk. I was like, Christian Kirk sucks. He's never been a one. And sure enough, you guys are screwed with Christian Kirk. So Brian Thomas Jr., I'm going to still start him this week. Fifth hardest matchup versus position. You got uh, Washington receivers having tough matchups. KC receivers, tough matchup versus Atlanta. And we've got Ladd McConkey, Quinn Johnson coming off that two touchdown game. All tough matchups. Eighth, see, eighth hardest matchup versus position for these receivers. I'm still going to probably start McConkey in some of my leagues. He's got to have a breakout game. He's going to be the man. I think Quentin Johnson got lucky. Easy matchup versus Carolina. <clears throat> I don't know if it's sustainable. Could he take that wide receiver one rule? Anything's possible. It's the NFL. It's fantasy. It's Wild West out here. And uh, I, I don't know, man. I I got both in one league. I'm probably going to roll McConkie out just due to the fact that he had a down week and he's trending up. But tougher matchup versus position. Just be aware of that, okay? Uh, Tyler Lockett. A little. I see a banged up designation here, but... Him, Jackson, Smith, Metcalf, tougher matchups versus position, but you can't sit Metcalf coming off a 32-point game. Uh, just make sure you check his injury designation before the game. I got a heart here. Too many injuries, too many things going on, too many heart designations, be aware. And we got the Denver Broncos receivers having a tough matchup, 10th hardest versus position. Alec Pierce, 11th hardest matchup versus position, but he seems to be the man over there. 17 points and 25 the week, or sorry, 17, yeah, 17 and 25 points the past two weeks 17 last week 25 the week before seems to be a go-to target for anthony richardson so if you are interested in alec pierce i did put a couple waiver wire uh priorities for him so you never know i, th I don't know if i got him here i'll have to check it out but uh I put a waiver wire in for him i'm like why not if he continues with this trend he could be the one over there in indy i have zero 
um, you know, Pittman stock at all. So could be interesting for Alec Pierce, but they've got the 11th hardest matchup versus position. A couple other tough matchups. Nico Collins, like I said, banged up. 13th hardest matchup versus position. Could be Dell week if Nico sits. Something to be aware of this week. Okay, so those are wide receivers. Again, the toughest going from one extreme, the Buccaneers, to the other extreme for the easiest match are the Bengals receivers. You can see it all laid out here. Go back and watch. Okay, moving to the tight end. And this position has been an absolute, absolute disaster. When I say disaster, I mean, ridiculous disaster, okay? Now, Kyle Pitts, only five points last week. Very disgusting. George Kittle, 21. That's good, but good matchup. So Pitts has a good matchup. Kittle has a good matchup. Brock Bowers, great matchup versus Carolina. has been pretty consistent the past weeks. Brock Bowers, a must-start for sure. Uh, Jake Ferguson trending to play. I hope he plays. If he does, this is good news, good matchup. Baltimore tends to play tight ends a little bit lighter. Uh, Dalton Schultz, good matchup. Third easiest versus position versus Minnesota. Again, banged up a little bit. I see a designation. Watch that before. But I really like Brock, Brock Bowers. George Kittle, especially if Debo Samuel sits out. Kyle Pitts, I just don't know if he's ever going to get going. I mean, it was the London week last week. Maybe it's going to be more the Kyle Pitts this week. So it could be a good start on the good matchup versus KC. Other guys here, everybody's a crapshoot. So I don't want to spend too much time on tight ends. Just give you a quick glance at the guys' tougher matchups. Gusecki, good coming off a good week, tough matchup versus uh, Washington. They play tight ends a little bit tighter. Again, according to this algorithm here, okay? Colby Parkinson, I would go ahead and start him based on the lack of receivers there, but he is playing Sam Fran. Tougher matchup versus tight end. Kincaid, seven points last week. Everyone's telling you Kincaid's the one. Again, Josh Allen is just not throwing. He's got to start throwing. That's going to boost Kincaid. It's going to boost Keon Coleman. Hopefully, this is the week where he's forced to throw versus Sam Fran, or sorry, versus Jacksonville. I hope he throws. But again, just giving you an idea here. Conklin, tough matchup versus position. A couple other guys here. You just want to take a quick glance. Trey McBride, 10th hardest matchup versus position versus Detroit. Uh, Dallas Goddard. 12th hardest matchup, but you got to start Goddard. Again, with this uh, tight end position, you just want to make sure, guys, you start as the most consistent player you can start. If you can get 5, 10 points out of them, you're lucky. Guys like Travis Kelsey, Sam Laporta just haven't been performing this year. It's been a bit of a disaster. Hopefully things start looking better for all these guys, okay? Let's take a look at some optimal matchups at the defensive position here. I know a lot of people like to stream defense. Packers versus Tennessee. Browns versus Giants. That makes total sense. Uh, like that. Giants have not been playing good, although I am rooting for Malik Neighbors to have a good game. I got some stock in him. Seattle versus Miami. Again, you're looking at Raiders. Look at all these matchups. Raiders, if you can stream the Raiders versus Carolina, great. Seattle versus Miami. I mean, why not? I mean, Miami's got Skylar Thompson starting, right? You could take advantage of that opportunity, right? Buccaneers versus Denver. Again, you're going against Bo Nix. Makes total sense. Commanders versus Cincy. Uh, could be a good matchup. But I like more Cincy, actually. I don't know why it's not rated high here. But I actually don't mind. Surprising this didn't pick up on this. Uh, Cincinnati. They're saying it's seventh hardest. I don't know. I think they're kind of factoring in last year a little bit. But I, I actually do like the Bengals versus Washington uh, this week as well. Uh, so I kind of like, I use this again as like a guideline, which is again, it's been pretty good here, but then sometimes I find some cracks in the arbor as well. That could be viable starts at, uh, each position here. Uh, I think that's it, man. Uh, Saints versus Philly. No, no chargers. No, maybe chargers versus Pittsburgh could be viable if you're desperate for a defense, maybe jets versus new England as well. But again, I think these top guys, all great starts. Again, the Raiders versus Carolina, Seattle versus Miami could be really good. Uh, Browns versus Giants could be good as well, okay? So screenshot that, take a look, all right? So those are your optimal starts and sits for each matchup, guys. If you have any questions, drop them below. I've started a group called Counselor's Edge. If you got, if you got want my picks against the spread, the money lines, all that is linked below. Join the Counselor's Edge below, guys, and get the edge in bets, okay, guys? Hope you guys enjoy the week. Week three is here. Let's crush it. Smash it. Tap it. Hit the thumbs up. And I'll see you guys next video. I'm excited. Football is here. And make sure you guys are following on IG at Fantasy Football Council. Turn the story mode on. Notifications on there for breaking news. All right, guys? And the bell here for breaking news as well. We'll talk soon, guys. Have a great day. Hope this was very informative. If you have any questions, drop them below. I'm out. <laughs>